Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our second conversation this morning is going to be moving to the power sector. Um, this, of course, uh, is a big concern for Nigeria and uh, Nigerians in general. And every government, of course, that has come into power in the last couple of years, last couple of decades, actually, you know, has made similar promises about fixing the energy sector and giving Nigerians a better, you know, a, a, a level of power supply. Uh, we're going to be joined this morning by Mr. George Etomi, who's a director at Eco Disco, to have a you know very broad conversation about this. Mr. Etomi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. My pleasure and compliments of the season. Same to you. Uh, thanks for making our time to speak with us this morning. Um, so the, the conversations on the power sector, you know, I, I believe are in you know, numerous directions. There's a lot of people who have shared their own analysis. And of course, if you look online, you would see different write-ups, you know, pretty much saying, you know, sometimes the same thing, sometimes a totally different, you know, thing. Um, but from your perspective, what do you, what would you say is the biggest challenge with fixing Nigeria's power sector? Um, good morning, and um, thanks again for having me. The power sector privatization, I've always said, um, is often wrongly compared with the uh, telecoms privatization. Uh, and this, the reason is very simple. In the case of uh, telecoms, you were um, actually starting companies on a green field platform. In other words, you did not take the old NITEL and then you you then try to to privatize it and make it work within its old existing structure. Um, about the same time, the um, a new technology came in and then we had the mobile telephony. So that was how that privatization realize its objectives in a very short time. Uh, on, but in the case of the power sector, you're actually taking the existing, what was there before, and you are seeking to rejig it. Um, it was always, or it is always going to be a daunting task because you're looking at a sector that was largely um, neglected for nearly 60 years of our independence. And you're, like you correctly said, um, everybody talks about how best to make it work, uh, but you do not go to the fundamentals of the problem. One of the biggest challenges in the sector today is the liquidity issue. Uh, liquidity because um, the product at the beginning of the privatization was designed to be sold at market value, but then through political considerations and other considerations, the regulator made the purchasers of the power sell at below the cost. And any time you sell a product below its cost, you're going to have a problem. It means, in the first place, the entire sector is cash strapped, which is the reason the government has been doing this subsidy game. And if you ask me, it's been very inefficient. It's inefficient for power, inefficient for petroleum. But uh, power is a very emotional subject. And, and because it directly impacts on the happiness of people, um, the, the uh, policy and government tend to pander to it as opposed to going to the fundamentals, dealing with it, and then you begin to uh, climb up slowly. It's like somebody who's been going downhill. You can't come up if you don't get to the bottom before you start climbing back up. So we lost a little bit of time from the advent of this privatization in 2013 when we just didn't do all the things that were expected to be done only under the multi-year tariff order so that tariffs could begin to slowly assume their true position. I have always postulated, and because I am in the game now, I know that if Nigerians see electricity, they will pay for it. So at times, you do not understand why the subsidies game is played the way it is being played. And what is wrong with the subsidy game is that you do not ex expect investors 
who want to put in hard money in return for profit to now be the ones to subsidize the sector. This has been the mismatch. But that's like a year ago, up to a year ago. Um, during this period, the, the, the presidential power initiative, the central bank intervention, they finally brought the sector together, which was lacking before. And we now are beginning to see an alignment between generation, transmission, and distribution. That alignment was never there before. Because what feeds the entire sector is the money collected by the distribution companies, which is then sent down the value chain to lubricate, as it were, the value chain. And, but as I told you, if that money, for example, if the product costs 50 naira, and you say distribution companies don't sell for more than 30, the problem you instantly have is that whatever money is sent through that value chain isn't going to be sufficient to address the problems. And right. one of the biggest problems is the cost of gas. The cost of gas is roughly 60% of the power components, if we're talking about the thermal plants. All and right, uh, George Tommy. Mr. George Tommy, uh, we're going to get back yes, to you, please. but at this point, we need to bring in Afolabi Akiro Gunde. Uh, good morning, Mr. Afolabi Akiro Gunde. It's good to have you join us. Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Afolabi. I'm sure we see. Yeah, good afternoon. All right. Is I can hear you clearly. All right, it's good to have you join the conversation. We're looking at the past sector. Of course, we're coasting the year down. I mean, in a few more days, we're going to be talking about 2022. So, but let's talk about, you know, our capacity and generation. As, uh, as a country and with the plants that we have, we have the capacity to, you know, at least generate about 12,522 megawatts. But, you know, currently we're still grappling with 4,000 for a population of over... 211 million, that's according to the data from the United Nations. Uh, how do you think that we're faring as a giant of Africa in terms of power generation? I think, I think um, power generation is one, it's just one, of, one part of the problem. The problem is actually an integrated one. It's one that needs to be solved end to end. Um, because um, for generation, as far as we know, we have about, we have about 13 gigawatts. That's 13,000 megawatts. Um, transmission, we can take between five, five gigawatts and seven gigawatts. Um, distribution is where a challenge is, which is basically doing anything between three and four or five gigawatts, depending on, on what's happening within, within the disco systems. So, so you find out that at various ends of the power, um, network, there are different um, capacities. And so, which was one of the reasons why the, um, Siemens deal was, um, was struck a few years ago to unblock that, um, transmission end make it pretty much as much as the, from, from the five to seven gigawatts up to the 13, so that you can transmit, you can generate 13, transmit 13, and then find a way to unblock the challenges downstream at the discos to enable them then distribute that 13, such that we can then move from the three to four gigawatts we are distributing at the, at the disco end to the 13. But the challenge also then still remains that even at the discos end, they are basically losing 40% of what they are getting. So if they, if they, if they, if they are getting five gigawatts, four gigawatts, they are losing as much as 30, 40% of that to TC and C losses, transmissions, collections, commercial losses. And those are the challenges which they have. So such that even if you end up transmitting and generating all of that power down to the discos, if we don't solve the problem the discos have, we will still not be, we will still not solve the problem. So which is why I say that the challenge it's an end-to-end -end challenge. It's something that needs to be solved in an integrated manner. Okay. Um, George Otomi, um, I believe that we can have um, these discussions, you know, and, and address the challenges on both the transmission, the generation, and distribution sectors um, individually. And they all have their own, their own um, individual challenges. I've spoken extensively on, uh, with distribution companies and their representatives, and they share a lot of challenges that they have. Um, but I want us to focus a little bit on the distribution aspect of it. Um, do you think, you know, when the privatization uh, started, do you think that the distribution companies invested enough in, you know, the facilities and infrastructure that was necessary? Do you think that there was a challenge with regards infrastructure for distribution companies? And that is still one of the problems that we are facing um, in, in this whole uh, uh, power um, sector. 
Now, uh, I agree with uh, what Afolabi said. You cannot isolate the, 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 the various segments of the value chain um, and deal with them. You must deal with them holistically. Otherwise, um, you would you'll be making, you'll have leakages uh, through any member of the value chain. But to your direct question, uh, the, the, the distribution companies make enough investment. You need to understand how the sector works. You just can't take money and go and spend it. You, it needs to be approved by the regulator because whatever money you spend on capital projects must reflect in the tariffs. And because the government wants to keep tariffs artificially down, that investment will not be approved. And if you go make an investment that's not approved, it's like throwing water down the drain. That's not what investors are there for. And most of the, the, the distribution companies cried about this because this was not the understanding at the beginning. But because tariffs had to be pegged low, investment too necessarily had to be pegged low. But that's, as I've told you, is changed now in recent months because we're finally having these alignment talks and all these things have been unlocked. And that also includes the cement initiative. So right now, uh, the capex of distribution companies has recently been approved. I know that for sure. And there are going to be massive investments in improving. Now, what are the distribution facilities we're talking about here? You're looking at your feeders. You're looking at your transformers. You're looking at um, metering your customers down the line. These are the things that actually have caused the high losses that Falabi was talking about. Yeah. If you begin to address them, which we will, then uh, the transmission end needs to be also be unlocked because at times the vagaries of the grid system, because you know we have a central grid system, the vagaries of that system is such that if there is a, a difficulty in one end of the transmission chain, it affects everybody else. For example, if uh, power uptake in one of the segments of the distribution um, areas is not working. They can ask you who is not even connected with the problem to drop your load so that you can balance the grid, which is why you have this on, off, on, off stuff that we see. That's not to do with dist uh, distribution companies, it's transmission. So we need to come up with a long-term plan for transmission. I agree that the Siemens then will help, but it really needs to uh, get on board as quickly as possible. On the generation side, the problems are far less. It's just a strict question of, uh, is there gas? Because there's a gas issue as well. Uh, if the generating companies don't have gas, they cannot generate. And at times, transmission says that I'm unable to transmit because I don't have the power from the generating companies. So it's a holistic uh, solution. I understand why people concentrate on distribution companies, and that's because they're the face of the industry. They collect the money, and there's nobody else you can hold uh, but them. But the truth is that we must begin to look at everything holistically. And I quickly add that that process has started, and I believe that uh, from next year, we will begin to see the, the, the benefits of this alignment, which should have been there, if you ask me, at least seven years ago. Okay, so um, uh, let's also get back, uh, Mr. Falabi, uh, back online. You, uh, it's okay that uh, you said that we can't totally just blame it on, you know, the generation. But the discos have constantly made arguments that they cannot give what they don't have. And, you know, it's totally dependent because they're not in control of what is being generated. And so what is given to them is what they have to, you know, um, distribute I want to find out from you, is this argument very valid, that the problem is not entirely, as much as we agree that, yes, the discos have their own challenges, as well as the, you know, um, other value chain, but the problem is totally on the generation. The problem is, the problem, the problem is what is multifaceted. But the key challenge remains, for example, if the grid can do pretty much 40% more, the whole system today, and support at least 40 to 60 percent more than what it's doing right now if we sort out our discos because right now you have situations where the discos actually turn away power that is given to them once they find out that they may not be able to actually generate fire 
um, revenue from this power. They turn back that power to the Tesco's. And, and so if you find a way to, 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 to create a situation where those Tesco's can actually accept that power, distributable within, within their system, of course, that will be an, a noticeable improvement immediately. But as it is to today, the, the, generate, the generation companies can generate much more power than the discos can, can that, 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 that the transmission system can take. The transmission system can, can transmit more power than the discos can take. So you have a situation where the, the weakest link, so to speak, right now, every, every end of our system is weak. But the weakest link right now is the discos. Because right now, if, they, if, they are using, if, if you are using, you know, if you are using 40 percent of every kilowatt, that is coming into your system, it's going to be difficult for you to, to actually perform. So, as of today, the weakest link is that, but the challenge is that it is an integrated challenge. It needs to be look at, looked at end to end. Okay, well, um, Ms. Aitomi, do you agree that the weakest link is the discos? And I also read an article yesterday that says here, the transmission company of Nigeria is 100% owned and managed by the federal government of Nigeria, and it is the weakest link in the Nigerian electricity network. Um, so, Ms. Aitomi, do you agree I with have, Mr. Have, Afolabi that the I discos have, are the weakest link? I would, have, I, would, I would have thought that was obvious. I don't agree with Afolabi at all that the discos are the weakest link. Uh, there's so much that goes into the grid balance. That's what, I'm ex what I was explaining before. Um, take a code disco, for example. We require more power. We ask for it. But frequently, we're tr told by the transmission company to drop low for whatever reason, uh, they may want the load uh, dropped. So that's not uh, correct. The only way discos can make money is if they give power. So why would you not give the power? The reason some discos reject power is because, as I mentioned earlier, it goes to their ATC and C losses. There is, um, um, to, to balance the grid, TCN can ask, take power to an area in your franchise area that's not giving you, generating you revenue. And you tell them, look, I don't want it there. Give it to me in Ikoi or give it to me in um, Lekki, where I know I'll get my money. But to balance the grid, they must distribute that power. That's where the, the rejection that Fulab is talking about is coming from. But these realignments, like I told you, is going on now. And that we're begin, beginning to slowly see um, uh, the need in the value to, to unlock what we have currently. If you leave it the way it is, and you simply just measure disco performance from reduction of ATC and C losses, we will miss the point. The point is that investments you require to get you power, get power to the people, needs to be made. And it's not going to be made if the tariff is not right. So it's yeah. all connected. I don't agree at all that the weakest link is the disco. In any case, I really want to get away from this blame game um, um, era. We just need to find ourselves on a path to solution. And like I said, this has started about a year ago through the, this process where all the key players in the various segments of the sector are beginning to speak to one another. And we can begin to unlock these problems. All right. Um, I think we, we'll, we'll have to wrap up here. And in, in you know, a different conversation, you know, uh, I hope that we can speak with you both again and you know, get to expand further on what the Siemens deal is all about and what it hopes to achieve. Uh, but for now, we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much. George Etomi is the director at um, Eco Disco. And of course, uh, Mr. Falabi Akinrogunde, thank you so much for your time this morning and for speaking with us. Thank you. All right. And uh, yes, that's uh, what we have for you on The Breakfast this morning. Just a little bit on the power sector and its challenges and where we're moving, um, uh, or how we're moving forward. If you missed out on any of the conversations, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle also on YouTube. I am Osao Gie Ogboma. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a great, great day. <laughs>